In 1937, Soviet aviation designers proposed a bold idea. They planned to design and build a stratospheric aircraft capable of circumnavigating the globe without refueling, based on the success of previous models like the ANT-25. In a letter to Stalin, they wrote, We don't have much time left until 1939. For this reason, we are writing to you to request the construction of a diesel engine aircraft with a range of 15,000 to 20,000 kilometers, capable of flying at altitudes of 8,000 to 10,000 meters. The designer's proposal was approved by the highest leadership. On one hand, the Soviet Union had a solid foundation in aviation technology at the time, and on the other hand, this was the most direct way to showcase the Soviet aviation technology strength. The proposed design was quickly put into practice, and the BOK-15 stratospheric aircraft was born. Speaking of the Bok-15, it is necessary to mention its predecessors, such as the ANT-25 experimental aircraft that appeared in 1933. It was a single-wing, single-engine experimental aircraft with a maximum range of 7,200 kilometers. However, it lacked pressurized cabin and was limited in flight altitude. The Bok-7 was one of the direct predecessors of the Bok series aircraft. It was a high-altitude experimental aircraft with a maximum ceiling of about 15,200 meters. It was designed as a military reconnaissance aircraft and was also planned to be converted into a high-altitude bomber. The Bokeh 11 was the armed version of the Bokeh 7, planned to carry or install weapons such as bombs, torpedoes, and electric gun turrets. This aircraft was not completed due to delays and reduced technical specifications. The Bokeh 15 largely continued the aerodynamic shape of the Bokeh 7. The aircraft was huge in size and lightweight in structure. The rigid fuselage and pressurized cabin were integrated, making the body very smooth. There were two semicircular cockpit covers on the back of the aircraft for the crew's observation. These were not openable covers, and the three crew members entered and exited through two entrances on the belly and back of the aircraft, with the back entrance being used in emergencies. The three crew members consisted of a pilot, co-pilot, and navigator. They operated in a pressurized cabin. The two pilots sat side by side in the front semicircular cockpit cover and controlled the aircraft using a hydraulic system. Due to limitations in material processing technology and pressurized cabin technology at the time, the structure of this cockpit cover was not fully transparent, greatly limiting the crew's visibility. To achieve the calculated cruising speed of 240 km per hour and the flight altitude in the stratosphere, the Soviet Union lacked suitable powerful engines. The only available model at the time was the AN-1RTK diesel engine developed since 1931. The engine had a turbocharger, weighed 1,100 kilograms, and had a maximum power of 1,250 horsepower. At an altitude of 5,500 meters, it had a rated power of 1,000 horsepower. Another advantage of this engine was that it could work continuously for 50 to 100 hours in high altitude conditions. These were all theoretical. The aircraft had a bi-wing beam structure, with the wing beams passing directly through the pressurized cabin to increase structural strength. The wing beams were made of steel tubes, and 12 fuel tanks were installed in the space between the wing beams and the leading edge of the wing. They could hold a total of 7.5 tons of fuel. The wings were covered with 0.6 to 1.5 millimeter thick hard aluminum skin. The wingspan of the aircraft was large to provide sufficient lift. The landing gear was similar to that of the ANT-25 with a tricycle configuration. After the main landing gear retracted, it was located below the wings. However, it could not fully retract, and the exposed part had fairings to reduce drag. The tail landing gear was fixed and non-retractable. The tail section of the aircraft was the same as the predecessors Bok-7 and Bok-11. In 1939, the Soviet Union decided to build two BOK-15 prototypes and selected two groups of crew members. They conducted flight training on the BOK-7 high-altitude aircraft. 
The first aircraft was almost ready by the end of 1938, and the designers were confident that it would be able to fly continuously for 24,000 kilometers, completing a non-stop, non-landing circumnavigation in high-latitude areas, breaking previous flight records. However, the actual situation turned out to be unexpected. The aircraft's engine proved to be below practical standards. Its turbocharger had a high failure rate, and the engine consumed a large amount of oil, some of which leaked through bearings and seals. These problems meant that the aircraft's range would not exceed 15,000 kilometers. The manufacturing plant proposed replacing the original engine with the AM35TK engine, but it was not approved. Instead of addressing the engine issues, the relevant authorities arrested project leader Chizhevsky and imprisoned him. This was a common practice in the Soviet Union at the time, and it had already affected members of the design team, greatly weakening their design capabilities. Chizhevsky was arrested in February 1939, and the subsequent flight tests and other work were carried out by others. The aircraft made its first flight in October 1939. In the same year, plans were made to modify the wings, propellers, and other components, which meant a significant increase in design work. In 1940, there were plans to install the 1,500 horsepower M30F engine. The Bach 15 did not complete all of its testing, and even though the situation had improved by 1940, with the approach of the European War, the development of the Bach 15 was put on hold, and it ultimately failed to achieve the designer's dreams of a circumnavigation and polar flight.